What's the word? Arts and Small Talk Podcast, episode 29. 29. You know, I keep the guests coming, man, and it's just getting better and better. Uh, this this guy right here, man, uh, go way back. Like, uh, you know, we, we crossed paths plenty of times in my younger days, his younger days. Uh, brought Brought up in the same city. The same like area, same high school, same middle school, same elementary school, uh, and then you know he became he became a star. He's he's working his way up the ladder, man. He's been on shows like uh, Snowfall, um, movies like Get Out, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, uh, actually, Tacoma PD, um, and then uh, I want to know real quick, man. Uh, but we got Marcus, Marcus Henderson. But I gotta clap it up. Uh, Marcus, man, it said I, I checked you out. It said Pete's Dragon. What did you do with Pete's Dragon? Oh man, I uh, I was just like uh, this lumberjack, pretty much. He was like a voiceover. You just a voiceover? No, no, it was like a it's a live action okay uh, movie and like so Let basically. Check that out. I was one of these uh, one of these woodsmen who Word. found out there was a dragon and, and it was trying to get that money. So <laughs> that, at least that's my justification for it. You know? Wow. Well, uh, we got we got Marcus Henderson, y'all. So Marcus, man, like of course I, I have to start off in case people don't know, um, you know how you know who you are. I'm, I'm there when I put a picture up, they're gonna know. Like, oh yeah, he was a, you know, what I'm saying, but you working your way up. Uh, right. So let's tell people about, you know, this brief, because we're going to touch in it. We're going to dig deep into it. But brief, like who you are and where you come from, and how you get to where you are now. Oh, man. Oh, uh, uh, I am Marcus Henderson. Uh, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, but to be more specific, I'm from Jennings, Missouri. J-Town. J-Town, J stay down. You got the hat on, too. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, yeah, I sort of stumbled upon this, you know, light, passion, love for performance. And then I just started to sort of climb the ranks of what I felt like you're supposed to do in order to get where you want to be. Uh, I don't necessarily think that it's a if there is a right or wrong way to get there, at least now. Uh, but the way I went was the way I went. And, and I think that people can benefit through going that way, but they don't have to in order to get in the same place or, or position that, that I'm in, you know, uh, and to whatever, to people who actually know what that means, like, <laughs> <laughs> what is what does it even mean to be in that position? You know, like yeah. it's it's just uh, uh, my my life, man. I, I've been looking at it like it's a journey, man. I've been looking at it like that since I was young, since I was a genius. I used to think, man, oh man, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna yeah go somewhere one day and do something, and you know, I you know I didn't know what I was gonna do, man. I just wanted to do something that was like cool. You know? Right, right. So like when you uh, when you was in when you was in elementary was you even into like acting or anything like that or theater or anything? Nah, when you was in elementary? nah, I don't think I was. I don't think it was like something where I was like, oh, I really want to do that. I thought it was like a fun way to sort of express yourself yeah. in a place where they were telling you to sit down and shut up a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's sort of like a natural like place where you could play. Right. And nobody was like, you know, like it was, you were supposed to make noise and you were supposed to like use your imagination. Like that was, that seemed, that seemed lovely, you yeah. know, uh, at the time. So, so yeah, I think that was like a sort of, there was a love for that. Um, but I don't think there was a necessary, there was a, uh, there was a, a knowledge of like, oh, I could actually do this. Right. <laughs> you know, when I, you know, I could I could study this one day and, and go and be, you know, that stuff came much later. I didn't learn that until I got to college. 
I didn't know how you could get on TV. <laughs> 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 I was, you imagine, dog, we in Jennings, man, trying yeah. to think how, how we going to get on TV one day. Mm-hmm. Like, you yeah. know, who was thinking like that, man? Right. Who? I figured out my way. I figured out my way to get on there. Uh, But I've I've been on TV a couple of times with commercials, two commercials, and then the TV show So You Think You Can Dance. I did that twice. So I was on So You Can Dance, yeah. But you've been on, like, the big screen, big screen, so. I mean, and that's what I mean. Like, you know, there there was, like, this way of, like, making your way and having this talent, but there wasn't, I feel like, dance was very encouraged at least growing up i i could see dance being very encouraged growing mm-hmm. up like there were these groups that they had like yeah, yeah. there was like a whole stars and heroes movement and there stars like, and heroes like, yeah. like, you know like kind of excel people's like talent you know uh so it yeah i think that there's a like uh i think there was a there, there was a the support for that were in acting I just I didn't know you know some people I, I still don't have the answers yeah. for how it all really works yeah. you know I just know that like you know you got to ask questions when you get there you know mm-hmm. and I've, 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 I just you know you got to ask the right questions mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it's who you know and learn from people and stuff yeah man so, so what age did you like and you, I think you said college, but like, what age was you like getting into like that field of like acting? Uh, or... So like, when I went to college, it was more like uh, uh, I went for football. I went to like you know I was gonna be this athlete, you know, and then all of a sudden, I was uh, I found myself doing security at a, at the theater. And again, like it's just this space that's like open and. You allow yourself to uh to just be you yeah. there's there is no like there is no front you know like you can just you be yourself or what you think is yourself or whatever that thing is and uh it was something that i think a lot of people who who at the time in my younger days i would say normies because they you know i just felt like artists is just a, if you're an artist you're just a different breed you just, yeah right you right. know uh but if you if you're not, you're just a normie, and that's cool, man. You you cool. You can be a normie, but that's but I I'll regard you as such. And I remember being in college and thinking like, yeah, man, I'm I'm not a normie. I I can't be over here with these like general ideas and stuck in one place and thinking that this is just what life is. And like, you know, I'm gonna be frustrated my whole life. I'm gonna be mad my whole life. I can't right, be right. Uh, so I, I, I really like gave over to the theater and like what I could learn there. And, uh, Dr. Tommy Stewart, who is, uh, the, the theater director over there, she, uh, she really fostered me to, to make sure that I had like the, the best experience possible to, uh, to, to learn my craft. Yeah. So, you know, I I keep having these like you know moments of my whole life. There have been these moments of like open openness and giving uh, from people from strangers. Mm. You know, uh, that I I just attest to like God and like just like being open, man. Like it's I'm open to what God is. (laughs) You know, I'm open to what. I'm open to what these interactions are. I'm open to the idea of what my future can be, the manifestation that I can build, you know? Uh, right. I'm open to that kind of stuff. So, now your, your mom, man, Miss um, Henderson, we used to always call her Miss yeah. Henderson. And she was all over the district. What what did she actually, was she, uh, was she ever teach? Did she ever teach? No, she wasn't a teacher, man. She was, uh, she was the secretary, secretary uh, for yeah. the, for the uh, the uh, ALC, okay, like you know, alternative learning center. Yeah, uh, she that's where she started, and uh, well, actually, to be honest, she started uh, as a, a cafeteria woman 
in, in Fairview. In Fairview, that's probably where I remember. Yeah, and then uh, I, I started but, noticing but, she was somewhere else too. But that was years ago. That was years like that was when I when I was like in maybe first kindergarten, first grade or something. Right, right, right. You know I mean? So a lot of that is just sort of like uh, me just being like, oh yeah, I remember, you know. But she she eventually like became like the secretary for ALC, and then she just sort of moved in this like secretary world for the disciplinary yeah, yeah. department of the school and uh and she you know she was she was vital there man like a lot of students really uh grew from yeah for real. being around her you know what i mean because she never you know she was a very fair woman she is a very fair woman you know that that has her ideals and beliefs and, and sticks to them and and just wants the best for everybody around you know, she's never yeah. played favorites, never like, you know, let you slide on one thing and then <laughs> like, you know, try to bust you. She's always going to bust you. Yeah, you right. Know, like that. And she made her it. voice known. I know that. That's right. You know, so, so yeah, man, that was a huge influence on like, you know, I, I wasn't even being in these spaces that we're from, you know, I wasn't involved in a lot of things that people were involved in just because, you know, my parents, you know, I had, I had great parents, man. I just could see what certain stuff would lead to, right. you know. Uh, it would help mold and, you as a man now. You know, exactly. Like, you know, like it, it, it's, 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 it's no judgment on anybody's life, you know, but it's, it's no judgment on anybody's life. It's really not. Right. It's it's a it's a it's what you want for yourself. It's really what you want for yourself, and and the decisions become easier when when you a when you have seen it when you can see it. Man, I I my parents growing up, man, we didn't <laughs> we didn't go and like you know, like vacation, like, you know, we going to Florida, we going to right, right. Florida, we're Florida, going yeah, Florida, yeah. No, you, you know, we went to Arkansas, man. We went to Arkansas for family reunion, we went to <laughs> Arkansas for funerals, we went to, you know, Tennessee for, you know, family reunions. So no stuff, beaches, like, no beaches and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, no, nah, dude, I, I never saw beaches until I was uh, 15. Wow. Uh, my cousin, uh, Cedric, uh, took me, he, he flew me to California my spring break of my freshman year. And uh, and that changed me, man. Seeing seeing the ocean, seeing stuff, it scared me. It scared me because it was like I was seeing stuff I'd never seen before. Yeah, only, so, only, the only time you see it on TV. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it was just stuff that was just shocking, like I, I, you know, and I, and, and I just felt like, wow, man, and like, the world is just so big. I want to see more. I got to see more. I got to yeah. see what this is about. You know, like that, that, that totally unlocked something for me, you know? Uh, and then by the time my, my senior year came, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I just wanted to know. Just want to go. You wanted to, you you, wanted to, you wanted to leave St. Louis and and kind of just see what's out there. Yeah, man. I just yeah. wanted to go. I I I knew that that I didn't. You know, I eventually, you know, what my fail my fail safe plan was. That's it. I was gonna go get my uh, PE degree, and I was gonna come back to Jennings, and I was it's gonna a, be a teacher, the, the, teacher. the gym teacher, and the, the football coach. Like that was it. Wow. Like that was that was Marcus that was the Anderson would have been the would have been, would have been the coach. I, I could see that though. I could have seen that because you. I definitely remember you playing football. I mean, I, I it was it's a, it's something that's still like a. I still have a a, a, a urge to teach. You know, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I still have that in me. That thing of like I wanna, 
uh, I want to pass on what this yeah. experience I have that I am having is a rare experience, man. I got to say, it's I not see. one that many people, many people can, can say that they have had or will have. You know, this is, right. I've been told several times on several movie sets that this is once in a lifetime, kid. Mm. And mm. I thought to myself, wow, man, how lucky am I? I'm getting this several times over, you know? Right. So, so I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm very appreciative, man. I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to, to being in those spaces that allow me to, to express myself in ways that I didn't know that I could, you know? Right. What about that? What about your what about your first like the first audition or the first very first time you was gonna be put on the T V screen or even like you're just your opportunity to even try. Well that 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 goes back to college again, man. Like uh our teacher, she was uh she was already doing movies and T V for years, you know. Uh and she really put her career on halt halt because she wanted to invest in these students. You know, she saw more of, for her future in these students than she did in trying to like pursue something, you know, in, in Hollywood or whatever, you know. Uh, she really had that sense of giving back. So I feel like it, you know, she used to bring these opportunities to, to our, our school, you know, like we auditioned for like Tyler Perry stuff and uh, a couple of movies that come, had come down. And then I finally, it's funny, my first uh, movie uh, I was in is called Honey Dripper. And it was just like this, this movie. <laughs> Wait, it's Garfield. called what again? Honey Dripper? Honey Honey Dripper. Wow, sound like a... Oh. And, it's, it, and it's like Danny Glover, Rock wow. Dudden, uh, just a cast full of uh, just powerhouses. Powerhouse, yeah. Uh, uh, and and so, you know, I I auditioned for this movie to be in this movie, and I don't hear anything. But all my friends at school were like, "Oh yeah, we we got this part. They told us to come in at five o'clock for it." Wow. And I go, "Oh man, I I didn't get in, man. I, you know, I felt bad." Did and you get then, discouraged uh, right there? All of a sudden, uh, like I felt like, damn man, like what? you know, what did I, what I do that I couldn't get the role? You know, I didn't get, I didn't get the role. You know, like this thing, like they was just throwing that shit out like hot cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what, what's wrong with me? Like, like y'all giving him? <laughs> why he get one? What's wrong with me? One. I couldn't get. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that feeling when they throwing t-shirts at the game. You know, yeah. like you, you like, oh, give me one. Right, it's right. Like people, everybody next to you get one. I'm like, how is this happening right now? But, uh, but you know, but the, the funny thing that happened was, you know, about a month later, you know, as filming is going on, a buddy of mine is doing a stand-in work for Denver, and uh, and. He's like, hey man, let me get a ride because my car is like messed up or whatever. I was like, yeah, no problem, man. But this is like, this is a, a drive. This is about an hour drive away. Ooh. So, you know, I was going to come down and just hang out, you know, and just chill because from what they had told me, like they just got him in a tent, you know, chilling, whatever, whatever. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm going to hang out with my, my classmates and stuff. I get down there, I drop him off. As I dropped him off, the casting director who was casting uh, people, which now I understand, they were casting background actors. You see what I'm saying? So, mm. which is a, a completely different thing, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But I see this casting director who was casting people, uh, and you know, she says, "Oh, hi, Marcus," and I was like, "Oh, hi." She's like, "Are." Are you? Are, you're late, aren't you? You're not in costume. I was like, oh yeah, nah. I, uh, y'all <laughs> like, never called. Not me. Not me. <laughs> yeah, y'all never called me. I've never got a call. So right. I, I, 
I just assumed I never got the part. She's like, oh, really? Oh, my, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we need to, why don't you go over to costumes and tell them that I sent you and, and get in a costume and, and uh, we'll just go over to the tent with your paperwork to you. I was like, dang. Whoa, really? But she knew your name, though, right? So it wasn't an accident. She ain't get yeah, you. She, she ain't picked the wrong person. No, she she was just like. But that's the thing. So that's the thing. If you do a background, they don't care who you are. Okay, okay, okay. They just need a body there. They just need a body. Okay. But if you're doing background and you know you want to do more than just background, but you don't have no type of experience, it is a great learning experience. Gotcha, gotcha. It is a great Heard it, learning everybody. Hear it. Experience. Get your learning experiences in. You're trying to be it, an actor. It, it is a great learning experience because it, it, it you know, it's, a, it's just a whole different lane. It's some people who do that. It's some people who... They get up and they like they check the phones and they're like, "All right, what's the what's the location where I gotta be this morning?" And they go there and they do their background work for like you know however long they gotta be there. They get paid and then they move on and they keep doing that. And sometimes people are like get bumped up, mm -hmm. you know, in some fairy tale stories. Some people that go, "Hey, actually, what you're doing is really funny. How about you say this?" Pat, pat, pat. And then they get a line, and then all of a sudden they become SAG eligible, and they can get in the SAG, and now they are eligible for more roles. Wow. Can do more things, and you know it's like a, a so there's a there's a drive and there's a tail in it that that says that background work is this legit source of income, and and it can it can be a thing that if you don't want to really like. Be on the screen do the for Hollywood you. thing, and yeah. you, know, you know you can just, you know, I, I I have several friends who do background work. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with it. I just knew that, like, when I did this particular gig, I was like, yeah, nah, man, I'll never I'll doing never background. Do background. I'll never do background. Work. And that did that make you want to go further, like after oh, that experience? Yeah. Oh yeah, because. You know, here's the thing, man. In that movie, there's this is like little bitty, like tiny moment where, you know, they're following the guitar player out of the club, and I'm right next to the to the uh, to the door, and I'm ooh, I'm I'm woo, jazzing it up, baby, ooh, you know, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and they're like, hey, hey, you, why don't you follow him out? Doing that, doing that jam, doing yeah, that, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> like director, like do that little thing with your shoulders that you're doing. And I was like, I was like, all right, yeah, no problem. But it was really cool is you get those moments and in, in being a background actor where you like, oh, I get, you right. know, so like in the future, somebody see that movie and they'll see it and they be like, oh shit, that's Marcus, you know, like I, right. I like, I like those moments. You know, I like I like having that, you know, because it it's always just a little symbol of you can too. You know, especially if you know me. Yeah. You can too. Yeah. That's no problem. That's what Marty's doing up there. Oh man. You can do that too. But I was just a background actor in that, you know? Mm -hmm. I was just a background actor. And it was and it was nice to have that little moment of recognition, you know. Uh Nice, and that, that took that took you to the that took you to more auditions and uh, that did you did you ever like as far as roles because I never did it before um, audition for roles or anything but do you you go for do they have like a, a top role you can apply for or is it like they pick you based on what they think you best at. Uh, is it like your choice of who you want to um, audition for, like a role, or do? Well, it, it just it just kind of depends, man. It's like, no, man, it, it just depends, right? Like, so you know, when we're talking like school productions, right? In school, they gonna they're gonna pick people who 
can best exemplify the qualities of this character in a show that people are paying for. Gotcha. You know, so they're going to pick, you know, the, 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 the survival of the fittest in a way. Uh, you know, and as you get older, and you know, you start doing like plays and auditioning for plays regionally and stuff like that. And, you, you know, it's like some Shakespeare or whatever. It's about how you put that text down, you know? So it's like, they're going to put you in where, for what the director sees fit, you know? Uh, and, and, in, and in Shakespeare, a lot of the times, you know, they, got, they already got set roles for black people and what, what they want you to play. Like a lot, of, a lot of directors, they know they want you to play Othello or Aaron the Moor or Caliban. You know, they, they, you know they want you to play these roles, but you know, they don't really consider you for the Romeos and the, you know, the... The, 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 the star the roles Hamlet, and stuff like the that. The Hamlets or the, the, uh, the Macbeth, you know. It's always, uh, it's always somebody else, so it's interesting, man. But then, you know, you get to Hollywood and it's a whole other thing, bro. It's a whole other thing. It's about who you know. It's about who you know. You know, it's it's about who you know. It's about talent. And it's, it's about resume talent. as well, right? You know, I mean, resume is cool too. But like, ultimately, it's like when people know that you're cool to work with and you're talented, then that just leads you to more work. You know, and the only thing that can take you out of that is yourself. You know, it's it's just an exchange of energy that you're going through the entire time. You know, you look at, like, rappers like Jay-Z, and and you think, man, this, how does my brother stay relevant for 30 years? Like, 30 years? And right. he's, like, been relevant for 30 yeah. years. 30 years, the conversa- He's been a part of the conversation for 30 years. Still like, is, how man. long you got to, like, how much you got to work to, like, keep yourself in in front of the thing that's happening that's constantly changing people's attention is constantly changing yeah and and again i feel like my way of life is you just gotta be open you gotta be open you know you gotta be open to that change you gotta be open to the new wave of things that are coming you know because uh you know Grains of sand don't stay on top forever. They get washed off into the sea. Exactly. So the new shit can be there. All right. I, I noticed that you, like, you've been, like, from just watching you. When I first seen you on TV, I was like, hey, I know. Then I had to look at it. Like, that is, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, I noticed, like, when I, when I introduced you, I said you on the come up because, um, like, your roles is getting more b- bigger. You know, like, um, when I watched you on Snowfall, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing a whole lot of markets now. Like, you know, I'm like, dang, yeah, yeah, is yeah. it really? And you know what I'm saying? And I didn't even yeah. know he was on Django. Um uh how was that how was the yeah. role how was that role doing get out? Like that 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 running scene. Like, can you break that down for me real quick? Like how, like when you got that uh, when they told you you had to do that and stuff like that. Cause that was a that was a spooky scene. I was like, "What the hell is doing? <laughs> Running full speed, <laughs> but you you felt like you was yeah. playing football, probably didn't." You? I mean, it it was really like it was it was really that simple, man. It was just basically like being able to, uh, you know, put myself back in that place of like, you know, track. You know, I used to run track. Too, okay, okay. You know, and things like that, and I I think that. You know what Jordan really wanted was something to be very, uh, you know, like just focused. It was training. Mm. You know, he wasn't out there to like scare him. He was out there trying to like use his body to his maximum capacity. Yeah. Like, and you cut too, like, like this, dude. Yeah, but if you look at it, that's not me on the uh, on the cutaway. Uh huh. That's not me. You can tell. Oh, when you when you cut, oh, when they, oh, yeah, you, that's just you running full speed towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they cut by then, I had pulled my hamstring, man. I was done. I was out. Oh, yeah, you pulled your hamstring, dog. Yeah, 
Yeah. Dang. That's what I meant by break it down. I knew there was something else to it. Yeah, and so they had man. to use somebody else to cut up, cut on the side. So then they used my stunt double for the cut on the side, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Didn't even know that, though. But it was, I mean, you know, like, but that, but that was after, like, like I was running from far. I was running far. Word. I'm a thick dude, man. So, you know, I, 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 I you know, my hands is staying as loose as they was in high school. I can tell you that much. Now, when you pulled it, when you pulled your hamstring, was it, did you have to do some more scenes or was that like your last scene or something? Nah, man. I still had, uh, you remember I chased him down at the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at that, uh, I'm, I'm kind of wobbling on that. I can, I can see it. When I watch it, I can see it. A lot of you know people around me say they don't never notice it when they watch it, but I can see it. I I can see myself going ah. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, like it's kind of genius that that's that's the deterioration of the body. That's like what's happening. Like you right. overexert it. You yeah. use it to a point of capacity, dude. Right, your like, body knows you when to tell you to sit down. Yeah, your body definitely knows. You know what I mean? To to and it's it's like he's gonna fight it just to get to Chris. And I thought that was uh I thought that, you know, that was a great choice to to have him still run and and do the thing and it'd be okay that I was like, Man, I I'm limping and he was like, No, it's all right, man, it's all right. It looks it's good, it looks good, it's okay. And I didn't realize it until, you know, later that I was like, Oh, I but yeah, I always noticed it, you know. Did you ever feel like that movie was gonna get as big as it got? Nah. I don't nobody, think nobody did it. I knew it was gonna be somebody's favorite movie, but I didn't think it was gonna be like the movie that people studied in yeah. universities, you know what I mean? So Yeah, that's like the it had memes and everything all over the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dope. <laughs> How was that um how was your, because I was going to actually see your comparison in your life now as far as being a father, because you're a father of what, two? Mm-hmm. How was that scene um, in Snowfall, ladies and gents, if you haven't seen Snowfall? Was it uh, season three, right? Yeah, season three. Season three, uh, he, he played an important role as being a father. Um, daughter was kind of getting stuck in the streets and... Um, how I mean, you that, see it, how you that see it, I feel like you kind of see the journey of it throughout the whole series, though, man. One, yeah, through, yeah. one through three, you kind of see, like... Yeah, you do, you do. The, the relationship between her and I. Uh, and that, and when I first got that role, my daughter wasn't even old enough to even be thinking about that kind of stuff. But at this point, you know, like, it's just like, wow, man, like to think about the things that could be happening right under your nose. And, yeah. You know. And <laughs> yeah, because I got a 12-year-old right now. She about to be 13. Whoa. Yeah. Buddy. I got four kids, dog. Man, you've been putting in work, bro. Yeah, I'm done now, though. You, you, should, you need to go ahead and put them in, put them in some commercials there, man. Hey, man, my, my daughter, she be doing some stuff, man. No, my, oldest, my oldest daughter. But like you say, man, like you don't know, like, Cause you know we we you know we don't own our kids. You know what I'm saying? We we just here mm-hmm. to guide them and exactly bring them into the world the best way we feel like they should you know do. But once they become on their own, they on their own. And yeah. I, when yeah. I seen that, when I was seeing that the, the third season, and how she was really getting into the streets, um, and you had to you know try to just you know do what daddies do. You know what I'm saying? Try to protect her as much as you can man and yeah like i was gonna ask you because it's some it's some actors since i'm on this topic it's it's some actors that have to play a role and then once they out of that role they, they can't get out of that role like in life if you have have you ever had that problem before like where it uh, messes with you mentally after playing a role so well uh no nah, no nah, i'm able to let it go pretty easy uh, I feel like maybe uh, I don't know, man. I've been fortunate enough that, like, you know, I I play some, I play a couple of memorable characters characters now on on TV and film, and uh, 
you know, that they're completely opposite, different things, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then, like, on the television show I'm on now, Tacoma FD, uh, you know, I'm this firefighter that, like, it, it's just a complete shit show, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's a <laughs> dumb show for smart people and a smart show for dumb people. Like, it's just, just, just college part humor, man. So gotcha. it's like, it's fun to be able to do all this different stuff, man. And, you know, and still like play these different characters. I mean, I was a, a drug dealer on Surviving for Morse, but, you know, <laughs> like what, what? So that, you don't that, see yourself doing that in real life? That was just a, 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 a label put on me. It didn't necessarily mean I had, I had to play it a certain way or mm -hmm. I had to do it a certain way in order to like, you know, get the role across, you know? Uh, you know, one of one of the roles I always forget about that I that I was in was this show Homecoming. It was called what again? You know, it's this show called Homecoming on Amazon. Oh yeah, Homecoming. Yeah, I just watched that. And, and uh, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a it's a it's a groovy show, man. I really dig it. It, yeah, uh, yeah. I forgot. Know, I, I forgot I, you was on it. I just watched it two like a month ago. As soon as it came out on Prime, I, I watched it. Yeah, I, I seen you was on there. But I forgot yeah, what you. Man. What did you? What was your role in it? I was just show? one of the soldiers that was in the uh, in the compound, man. Oh, and right, I just wanted right. to go home. Man. That's right. You know, one of his boys. I was like doing the pranks and stuff, helping him with the pranks and, and things like that, man. But you know, like even that, like I had a nice little like scene in there with. With Stefan and yeah. and it was it was it was cool, man. Like it's cool to not have to do something that felt stereotypical or yeah. was in any type of way like compromising like who I am or what I felt what I wanted to bring to the character, you know. Right. So I, I'm, I'm fortunate, man, that I I don't have to play those those kind of characters. I mean, doing Django. And playing the slave role, like you know, I'm not gonna. I I get the argument of like, you know, I, I'm not doing it again. I'm not gonna play another slave again I unless see, the bro. role is I like see. the role. The role's gotta be amazing, and I gotta be winning at the end. Like it, I, it can't be no tragedy. It can't be no. I, it's gotta be some type of the tra let the tragedy come later. You know, but the end of that story has to be fucking um, like amazing. Like facts. That's the only way. Only way. Can't do it again. Uh, but I do believe that it is worth it to to in some way like uh, embody that because. There is something, it's something odd about that that kind of brings you to the reality of like the, the, you know, it's funny, man. I was doing this movie and I'm playing a slave, but I'm in this contract that's like basically like you can't do this, 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 this. Yeah. And you, you come when we call you, you know, like clear your schedule for a year or something like that like yeah how, and, how was and, that man like is it has you had when you was on a contract like how the contract stuff work like for the people that don't know like if had was it other um opportunities coming your way but you couldn't do it or what yeah man so like you know it would be like one one example is uh audition for uh star trek and the problem was was that I couldn't uh, I couldn't do it uh, because they needed me to shave, mm. and my hair needed to be grown out uh, from Django. So I had already been growing it out since like September or something like that, and and I I had it growing and growing. Uh, I could grow more, but I I couldn't grow it very fast. So, if I cut it off and they needed me next week, oh. then that means they gotta like go and piece together a wig that costs thousands of dollars and, and or hair oh, just that for you, thousands of dollars <laughs> just for me. And they just like, well, we can just cut this. 
it just cut this man out. It's like, I don't know, man. I just. Four and, minutes, uh, how, and, like, how was that time? Was you getting paid around that time? Or, or how was yeah, that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had me under a, a, a contract that paid me a lump sum, lump sum of money. And, and because, because of that, that means that they, that I, I, all I can do is, you know, I mean, like, I, basically, if there was work that I could take, yeah, you know, that was like guaranteed, like, okay, no problem, like, we can do this around your schedule, then I would, I could do it. But it was a lot of work that was like, Constant. well, we're gonna be shooting between this time and this time. And then we go check back with the people at Django and they'd be like, oh, well, we don't know when we're going to need him again. So mm. it might not be advisable to do anything. I mean, we already paid him, right? You know, he's getting a check, right? Right, right, right. And so it's just sort of, it's like, dang, man. It's, it's the, the psychology behind it, you know? the idea of a contract, man, and what that is. And that's your freedoms right there. Yeah. That, that contract. You know, so, so it's, yeah, I think it's it's important, man, like, you know, to be able to live with what it is that that, that you're able to negotiate, you know, and you got to know your worth. And it's hard. It's, it's a hard, yeah, you gotta tricky, know your worth. tricky game, man. It's a tricky game. And I mean, you got to know truly what's for you is for you because it's some stuff that I've been like. Turn it down. I, I mean, like, I'm like, well, are they paying anything? Like, you know, and they're like, oh, they're offering this. And I'm like, mm, that don't right, right, sound right. right. That, something about that don't make me feel. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you ain't got to take everything. You ain't got to take everything. Yeah, like, yeah, something about that. Like, I don't think they value me the way I value me. And that, that'll be a problem at some point. Because if I value myself a little more than they value me, then we'll be in conflict about something. And our priorities will be in two different places. So it's just something about that. You got to know what you're walking into. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes you take work because you got to take work. Right. Right. What you going to do? So I think that I think that it's like it's just one of those things. It's like you just gotta call it on the day and say, "Hey, all right, you know, follow I'm going your gut. Out for it. Yeah. yeah, follow your gut." I mean, most of the time you're able to read the script before you go in for something. So on a uh, on a time like this, man, dealing with the pandemic, have how is it like? You gotta you just on the waiting list. You just kind of like. It's nothing really going on for you, or until I mean, it's they. going on. It's stuff going on. It didn't stop. It didn't stop the the movement of art and okay. people expressing themselves. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Writing something and needing somebody like me to express it through my instrument. You know, uh, okay. I think that I think that that's I think that that's what's important about this time. Really, is that you express yourself the best you can because. You know, in 50 years, people are going to look back at this moment to learn something. Yes, yeah, 2020. And, it, and, and you don't know who can be affected by what it is that you put out there, you know? So you got to put it out there the best way you can. I'm going to do it through Puppet. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something with Puppet. I was, <laughs> I, I, I was hugely influenced by Jim Henson growing up. Man. I used to love the way puppets work and right. how it made me feel like they, they could be real people too, you know? Uh, That's deep. So, you know, everybody find their own way in something, man. Yeah, because I, I definitely, you know, like been, I mean, it's a, it's a time to sit down as well, like especially like if you, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how, how, you know, like away you are from home and your kids, um, but like, if you, or if you, def, if that was the case, like you're on the road all the time, you know, you're doing, you know, auditions, your movie, movie sets and stuff. It's, you know, it's time to sit down. It's time to like reflect on, okay, let me see what, 
what I can do different here now since I got this time to think, you know, let me, let me be here for my kids more and, you know, and stuff like that. Like I know, yeah, I know it helps out a lot of people um, during this time as well. For that. Yeah, man. And definitely like, and especially, you know, uh, in that time, it, you know, it, it's been, I feel like it's been so long now. We've just been in the house. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in this time, yeah, man, I'm really learning the difference between, like, home and work, you know? Facts. When I'm shooting Tacoma, uh, I shoot around the corner. Like, literally, like, I'm 15 minutes from okay. work. I try to work 15 minutes from there. It's like, it's great. It's the greatest setup ever. Um, and if we're on location for something, it's usually, like, five minutes from my house so it's even better uh, but i would go to work and i would come home and go to work and come home i'll go to work at six in the morning and come home at six in the evening spend a few hours with my family go to sleep wake up and do it all over again and i'm thinking now i'm spending time like y'all see me i'm yeah, here yeah yeah right 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 no what's the problem right right but it's it's like it's a difference it's a difference. Like you got to put in time with the family. Like you put in time at work, you know, and it, and it, but it ain't work. It's like, it's just, you need that to grow, man. You need that to, yeah. you know, I, uh, yeah, it's super, it's super important, man. It's super important to have that, uh, that thing. I got three more questions for you, bro. Um, so, I wanted to ask you um, about when people say uh, you made it, you know, the, 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 the word like, oh, you made it, man, you made it. What do you think about that, that saying? Um, do we ever really make it? Because well, if you make it like on the TV screen, got the money, what are you doing mentally? Did you, did you, did you, did you make it mentally? You know, like, what do you think about that saying when people, like, especially, like, childhood friends and people you grew up with say, hey, man, you made it. Like, what you think about that? Uh, I think when you make it, uh, it's just the subjective thing. Yeah, it is. Know? It is. Uh, I think that that <laughs> it makes me think about fake it till you make it, you know, kind of thing. And I, I like to think that I, I haven't faked any of this. You know, it's all been very real and very real experience that has affected me very, very greatly. And, uh, you know, I just, in a sense, I, I get that. I understand what, what they're saying. Because like I said earlier, like, you know, I, I had I made different choices than the people around me growing up, you know, uh, and and people are satisfied. You know, you gotta do if you want. If if I ended up being the coach at Jennings and the the PE teachers there, I guess what I made it. Like that that that's the thing. Right, right. If you happy in what it is you're doing, then like I by all means, yeah, I made it because I'm happy. I feel you. I feel you know? You uh so I think it does exist. You can make it. You know, just be happy. You know? That's deep. Well, do you have a a um a dream role? Do you have a role that you you know, since you've been, you know, getting in the field and you know industry and everything like that is it it's a role you still waiting on is it something that you you can't wait to get like this is my dream role i want to get well uh in regards to acting you know i always give like a a quick answer of like you know i really want to play aaron Moore from titus andronicus like i really want to do something with that character Nice. A great character. Uh, but uh, as far as like a role, like that, I feel like man, I would have so much fun in. It's a sort of uh, 
a reckless mentor kind of role, like a like a a bad uncle kind of role, where like I give great advice, but man, am I fucked up? You know, <laughs> like it's just, it's, right. it's, uh, I, I love. I would love to to excel in a role and do something really meaningful in a yeah. role like that. Yeah, with, with, with a story. With a story, a story that could be really meaningful around that, like some like a role, like maybe like you 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 was at the bottom, and then you you know you turned your life around type thing. No, or just you no. just want to play that role, like it's just, like what we like what, what we would like, call ourselves used to. Imagine, like imagine, a, imagine like a, a mix between Morpheus and uh, and Rick from Rick and Morty. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Morpheus and Rick. What a combo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, man, that's 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 kinda that's kinda weird and fucked up, man. It's like, yeah. And then make him into a puppet. And then that's <laughs> that's who I wanna be. That's what's up. <laughs> I got this last question. I ask every guest, man. So you, you I'm pretty sure you have one. Nay uh give us one of your most embarrassing moments, bro. One of your most embarrassing moments. It could have been on set. It could be anything like that. Something that you can laugh at now. Oh, man. I embarrass myself all the time, bro. So, I mean, uh, something I can laugh at now. Damn, man. That's a good question because all this stuff I can laugh, laugh myself every day. Uh... Sort of redemptive story, but I was super embarrassed that it happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was uh, uh, doing this audition for a show for this lady who cast the HBO, and it wasn't an HBO show, but just with HBO ladies, so you never know. She right, 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 right. So I uh, I went and I went in, but like my mind was just in another place. I wasn't present at all. And when I got there, like I saw the guy that I knew, but I ain't really like, you know what I mean? I ain't really like. You wasn't feeling it for real. Yeah, I, I, we ain't on that. Oh, we ain't on that together. Like so. Uh, so I kind of shied away from from him, and and I had no reason to, by the way, no reason to at all. It was just a, a purely energetic, like I don't vibe with this dude right now, but I think he's a lovely person. Uh, uh, but then I was also seeing like all these people that I saw on TV growing up, that's just passing by me and stuff. It was just this weird moment where I'm just like. Yeah. Like, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Just standing out in the lobby. And then they're like, Marcus? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. And I'm like going in. And I, I'm prepared. I know the lines and all this. But, man, dude, I would just get to the middle of the thing and go. And freeze. Can we start over? And then <laughs> we would start over. And then I'd do it again. <laughs> And Dang. then get a little, get a little farther, get a little farther. Then be like, oh, oh I forgot. The <laughs> Constantly. Then, one more time. God, I'm so sorry. Can we start over? Man, the the worst feeling I I can ever have as a, as a performer as an actor is to start my performance over. It's the, it's the, it's the, I'd die a happy man if I never have to do that ever in life. It's a pet peeve. Start, it's such a pet peeve of mine, man. Like, I I, I want to see it all the way through. The, the light, the spirit is shining all the way through in that, in that moment. And I don't want to, like, stop it with my, oh, my self-conscious energy, man. Right. I don't want to stop that. So, uh, so it really, it really gets to me, man. So I, I have to start over three times, 
And then finally, I got to the end of it mm-hmm. and just dropped in, just like you know that that you know when you talk to your kid, yeah, and you and you got to be daddy, and you drop yeah. into daddy. And it's just like that's that's that drop in when you drop into a character. That's what it feels like. Okay. Uh, you drop in, and then like I've delivered the lines, and, and then they we finished. And as I'm like walking out with my head hanging, right? Because you felt uh, you felt like you a producer, totally crashed it. Yeah, a producer says, "Hey, if you start where you." Where if you start where you just stop next time, that role is yours. Mm. And I was like, "Thanks, man." And I like walked out. <laughs> and he didn't have to say that. Right. He didn't have to say that at all. But I just felt like the biggest asshole in the world. <laughs> like just a big ass fucking hole that just shit it. Shit everywhere. So it was just, <laughs> yeah, that was my most. That was that was one of my most embarrassing. Moments. Moments. I'm I'm pretty sure. Giving what? more thought to the right. Question, you're gonna be like, man, I should have told him. No. So, right, right. You know. Well, bro, man. Episode twenty nine, man. I really appreciate you. Oh, uh, man. Pleasure, having pleasure. Me, man. pleasure. Uh, J Town alumni like myself, man, and and I uh, hope you know and. Uh, bless you, man. Is for you know before your the rest of your career as a, as an actor or anything, man. Anything that you want to do, man. Like man, you I out here shining, you, man. You out here making St. Louis look good, and uh, Thank you, man. we all appreciate I, it, man. For real, you do absolutely, that. man. And I appreciate you, man, for for having me on and you know allowing people allowing me to connect with these voices in St. Louis, man. Because you know it's been a while since I've been home. Man. And I and I think about it constantly. So I, I uh, I'm always uh, I, I want to say I'm always available, man. And, and, and just in your endeavors and what it is that you're trying to do, man. I know it's Appreciate I know it's gonna be important. I know it's yeah, gonna be yeah, important. Yeah. Man. So I'm trying, bro. It is important right now. So keep doing it, man. Keep documenting the future. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Appreciate it, right, man. Brother. Make sure y'all check Absolutely. out. Uh, Previous episodes, you can also subscribe, like us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, so you can see the video, um, all that stuff, man. So, yeah, just check us out, man. And uh, ours is Small Talk Podcast. I'm out of here. We out, man. Say we out.